As we've progressed so far through this course, predominantly we've looked at using video clips on one track. In fact, occasionally we've looked at using two video tracks, or in fact, sometimes more. Indeed, we've also used an adjustment layer here down on video track 2 when we wanted to adjust the opacity of the clip that was below it. Remember that one way of doing this when we wanted to blend our adjustment layer with that clip below was to come down to the opacity here. When we tie it in with the blending mode and we'd use that Lumetri gold tobacco effect, well, in fact, for the moment, I don't need that adjustment layer, so I'm going to remove it. By having it selected, I can right click on it and then run up to that option, clear. Now, just so I know where I'm up to, I'll run up to file and hit save. Now, in terms of using more than one video track, and having different video clips spread across different video tracks, or as we've just seen, an adjustment layer. Well, on the whole, I've steered away from it too much so far because I wanted to introduce you to a part of video editing with Premiere Pro that you will use at least 75% of the time. I'm talking about a technique that has the term compositing. And despite that scary sounding name, it's no more difficult in reality than what we've just seen and what we've seen previously when we did layer video clips on different tracks. Because essentially, that's all we were doing. We were compositing. However, all that said, despite me suggesting it's very easy, it is, I'm not saying it isn't, but there is more to it than that though, because we can develop it into a much more advanced state. And we'll use the technique as we progress through this particular chapter when we want to substitute clips on different layers, or when we want to fade or blend between two different clips, or even three, or however many you want, or indeed if we simply want to use blending modes, when we want to merge different types of clip. And as we'll see, we'll also use the technique a lot with video clips. But as we progress, don't be deterred from using images too. Still images, photographs. It might be you want a PIP effect, a picture-in-picture -picture effect, with a still or a photograph in the corner, or whatever you prefer, of a long or wide video shot. Well, that photograph could be static on video track 2, whilst the video on video track 1 clearly moves. Or, if you prefer, you can have the photograph move around the screen. You could have it fading. You could have it flipping with a different type of effect, etc, etc. Well, this is all possible when we use the technique of compositing and layering across different video tracks. Now, strictly speaking, when we talk about compositing, when referring to video or photographs or text even, now I know we've not really looked at text yet, but we will progress to that. But when we are using audio, which is often inevitable when we've got video and audio synced together, embedded, well, we don't tend to use the term compositing when we are talking about multiple audio tracks. Instead, we use the term audio tracks. And this is possibly because the multiple layering of audio in a recording studio is known as multitracking, which reminds me, down on my timeline, quite a while ago, with the embedded audio here for video track one, I muted the audio. Now, let me just unmute it, or I might forget. Although, it is difficult to forget, of course, because when it is muted, that M there is illuminated in a sort of lime green. In fact, now that I'm in the mood for tidying up, let me just restructure, or at least resize these video tracks. I'll drag it down there for video track one. And say that I did want to add a different audio track, and remember the operative word there is add rather than replace. Well, I would need to create a different audio track for this. Maybe I want to add in this music file. Well, by coming over to audio track one here, for example, and right clicking there in that blank area, I can run down and choose the add track option which means, of course, with my music track, I can left click and drag and drop onto audio track two. I'll just expand it so we see the waveform display and I'm going to trim it. So I'll choose the razor or cut tool and trim it there to the length of our video clip. And then once more by choosing my selection tool, I can select the audio that we've just cut after the video clip and I'll hit delete on my keyboard. Okay, we're all tidied up now. Well, I say that. I don't particularly need that adjustment layer, so I'm going to right click on it and then run up and choose clear. And once more out of habit, so we know where we're up to, I'll hit file and run down to save. So essentially then, to conclude, compositing is adding different video clips to different video tracks. We're going to cover this as we progress, but to finish off for this tutorial, of course, compositing is no more difficult than finding a different video track. Let me just choose one of these. I want to make sure I've not got the same one. Okay. Right, I'm going to go for that one, left click, and this time drag it onto video track two. 
Now, I've already said it's no more difficult than this. However, there is something that we've noticed. The embedded audio for that video clip that we've just brought in has now covered up the audio below. So that is something that we're going to be looking at as we progress. Right, we'll finish then. So that's a brief introduction to compositing.